Okay, boys and girls, um, we're coming to the end, I think, of this uh, series, unfortunately for you, I'm sure. Um, and I think this is lecture 16. Um, I, I have no idea, but I think it is. It could be. I, I have no idea what day it is, but I think this is lecture 16. And um, I want to just continue on where we um, were from the last lecture, which was amazing, wasn't it? It was just a brilliant lecture last time. But it was this amazing result, um, says, links that, which links exponential um, function and the cosine sign if you have um, complex numbers. And this is the, this is the formula. Exponential i theta or exponential i x is cos theta plus i sine theta. And as I say, guys, this, what, this is what makes complex numbers um, so special because this link, although it doesn't superficially seem that amazing, means that you can do a lot of things with complex numbers now that you couldn't do before. And I'll talk about that in a second, based on the properties of the exponential function. So the exponential function has some amazing properties and some very, very nice properties. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to re recall um, just exponential x. Now, this is um, just the real uh, um, exponential function. So if you've got exponential x, one of the most important properties of the exponent, of exponential is that when you differentiate it, you get exponential x. That's amazing. And, and then there's a chain rule. Uh, this is just a kind of a side. If I want to differentiate exponential 2x, because this is what we're going to be doing in a minute, when I differentiate exponential 2x, I'm going to get exponential 2x, because I differentiate the exponential first, and I get exponential 2x. But I must differentiate inside the exponential using the chain rule, and I get 2. OK? So this is a very, very important rule. In, um, uh, in This is a very, very important if exponential x. The second very important property of exponential x is the multiplication property. Exponential x by exponential y is equal to exponential x plus y. Ooh, look, that's, that, that is amazing. And you can generalize that then. If you have exponential x to the power of n, that's exponential nx. Okay, so that's, these, are, these are three different properties. Property four. It's very important as well. Exponential x over exponential y is just exponential x minus y. Okay, so that's a very important dis, uh, division property. And then uh, five then is not so much, is, is not, is, is kind of anti properties. And um, exponential x plus exponential y, if you add exponentials, you just get exponential x plus exponential y. And um, students get confused about the properties of exponential and think that you always can do something to them. If you have an exponential function and you have two exponential functions, you can always do something. You can't. If you're adding exponential functions, you just leave them as they are. And similarly, if it was a minus, it's exactly the same. So if you've got, if you're adding or subtracting exponential functions, you leave them alone. You can't do anything to them. You can only do things to exponentials when you're multiplying or dividing. And that's a very, very important property. And that's, uh, we, we'll be talking about that in a second, or maybe maybe the ne next lecture, um, when, we, when we start looking at multiplication and division of complex numbers, and how, in fact, using the polar form is a lot easier. But um, these are, but we're going to be using, these, this is, as I say now, the, these are the properties of exponential x. And we're going to be using these properties now in a um, complex situation. And exactly, it's exactly the same. The properties are always exactly the same. Instead of x here, you're going to have ix. Okay, so let me just show you this. Let me just let's look at let's look at distribution. Let me just look at differentiation. So if I have um, exponential i theta, okay, and um, I'm going to differentiate that. I get exponential i theta because we differentiate exponential exponential. But now I must differentiate inside the exponential, and I get i. So this is exactly the same as this property here now, guys. When you differentiate exponential 2x, you get exponential 2x by 2. You must always differentiate inside the exponential. And that's what I'm doing here. So for, so if uh, you can prove this, you can show that this is uh, this, or this makes sense by looking at, um, um, that, that's, um, I look, you can just do, oh, and let me just do something. Let me just, you, you don't have to be to look. Um, a lot of the time you're differentiating something like, exponential i omega t that happens a lot when you're um, uh, using complex numbers to model real life systems and um, 
this kind of an input is quite a, an important input. And so if you differentiate this, you get exponential i omega t by, when I differentiate this with respect to t inside the exponential with respect to t, I get i omega. Okay? Now you can actually then, if you like, if you want to, you can come along here, for instance. We know what exponential i theta is, right? Exponential theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. And if you wanted to, you can multiply in that. So, but you have to be careful now. I by I gives you um, I squared. So you get minus sine theta plus I cos theta. Okay, so you get all these kind of nice properties, which look kind of bewilderingly complex, but they're not actually all complex, uh, complicated. Um, but it's they're all based on the properties of the exponential function. And then just messing about with those properties and messing about with the fact that exponential I theta is cos theta plus I sine theta. Okay, so that's the first thing that maybe we, you, you want to do when you're differentiating complex exponential functions. It's exactly the same as you differentiate ordinary exponential, but be careful because you have to differentiate inside the exponential as well. Um, if you come down to this one here, guys, look, if I differentiate exponential i omega t, yeah, I get exponential i omega t by omega, you can leave it like that. That is fine. That is beautiful. But if you wanted to maybe do more to it, you can if you want to. Multiply that out as exponential as i omega and it's cos omega t plus i sine omega t. If you want to, you can do that. Why not? You know what exponential i omega t is, it's just that. And if you multiply that out, then you'll get again, you have to be careful, i by i gives you so you get minus omega sine omega t plus i omega cos omega t. So that's a, a something that you will see especially those of you who are doing um, electronics or on that, that side of things. Um, exponential I omega t is a very, very important input that people sometimes use for um, uh, electronic systems. So uh, you need to be able to differentiate, and this is how you differentiate. It's very, very, very easy. Okay. Let me talk about another one. Let me just, let me just talk about um, uh, uh, another uh, important property there maybe is, um, is using... Now, this is kind of an aside, really. Now, I talked about differentiating complex exponential functions. And uh, if you go back to the first um, page here that I did, I was multiplying exponential functions here. Um, and I'll come back to that. But before I forget to do this, I want to do this as well. This is kind of a mathsy, nerdy thing that I want to do. Um, and I just want to show you what, what, what you can do, other things that you can do with complex exponential functions. And the next thing you, can, you, you might, might be interested in is um, uh, Proving trigonometric identities. Now, these things are very, very important, and you will see these throughout the, um, your, 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 your studies. And you've seen them already in Leaving Cert. Um, it's, it's relationships between costs and signs. The most important one, of course, is um, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. That's, that's the most important one. We're not going to prove that. But um, if you have, instead of a cos squared theta and sine squared theta, you've got cos 2 theta or sine 2 theta, then you can use the, the complex exponential to prove these things very, very easily. Let me show you what's going on. I'll just Let me just do, start, start with this one. Now, let me just look at exponential i theta. That's cos theta plus i sine theta. That's the basic result. Now, if I replace theta by 2 theta, I get exactly the same thing here. I get cos of 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta. Okay, so there's nothing, there's no major thing there. All I've done there is I've replaced theta by 2 theta, and this is what I get. Now, you have to be careful. Or you, can, you know you can be, you have to be creative now, actually. So if I go back here and I look at property 3 of the exponential function, if I've got an exponential and I've got two things multiplied inside the exponential, I can bring one of the, the numbers outside as a power. So let me just do that. If I look on the left-hand side here, what do I have? I've got exponential i2 theta. I can write that as, that's exactly the same as exponential i theta in brackets and then squared. I can bring the number 2 outside as a power. Now what I'm left with is exponential i theta. And the reason why I can do this is because I've got multiplication inside the exponential. Now, if you look at what's on the left-hand side now, we started off at exponential i2 theta. Now I have exponential i theta to be squared. And I can write that as cos theta 
plus i sine theta to be squared, right? That's what exponential i theta is. And now if I, if I multiply that out then, I'm going to get cos squared theta and plus i squared sine squared theta plus, when I multiply the cosses and sines, I'm going to go 2i cos theta sine theta and i squared is minus 1. So what I'm going to get here, guys, I'm going to get cos squared theta minus sine squared theta plus 2i cos theta sine theta. Now, that's a kind of, if you look back to where we started, this is where we started from. I've left the right-hand side alone. I haven't done anything to the right-hand side. All I've done here is I've messed about with the left-hand side. And the left-hand side now is this here. And this is equal to what we started with here, cos 2 theta plus i sine theta. And if you compare, compare the real terms and the imaginary terms, what you get then is, therefore, if I get cos squared minus sine squared, and I get cos 2 theta, is equal to cos squared minus is equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, and I get sine two theta is equal to two cos theta sine theta. Now there are other ways to prove these identities, folks, and you know so. The, but the, 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 that's the most that's the simplest way is to use complex exponentials. Okay, so what I've done here, and this is again, this is kind of a mathsy, nerdy kind of aside, and it is an aside, um, but it's, it's these trigonometric identities occur a lot actually in engineering analysis, and you need to get happy to using them. And students don't seem to know them as well as um, as they should. I'm just thinking back to my own school days. If I didn't know them, I got beaten. So I I I, I got to know them pretty quickly. So this is um, uh, I'm not advocating that I would beat you. Okay. That's not what's going on here, but I'm uh, I'm just saying that the different times and you just learn different things, um, and this is what I used to. This is was very very important, and this is something that I found very very useful and very very important as I went through college. These kind of trigonometric identities occur a lot more frequently than you 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 think, and you need to get happy using them. Actually, it makes life a lot easier for you, and. You can prove these trigonometric identities, show that they're true, very, very easily using complex exponentials. Now, we've just done exponential i2 theta. You can do exponential i3 theta and i4 theta as well. I'm not going to do that. Well, I just to show you what you do, but it's just it's just messy. But you can you can obviously extend this. So exponential i3 theta, that's cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. And then on the left hand side, you do exactly the same thing, except we have a three now, so you get that's equal to exponential i theta to be cubed, which is um, cos theta plus i sine theta to be cubed. And then you multiply that out because it's a cube, so you, it's, you just multiply that out, etc. I'm not going to go through it, folks, but you get identities then for cos three theta and sine three theta in terms of cos theta and sine theta, but I'm not going to go through it. Okay, so the most important one actually is this idea of because the most important one that you see most often are the cos two theta and sine two theta identities, and the way you get them, one way to get them is using complex exponentials. Okay, that's a, that's kind of an aside, um, and that's a very very nice aside I think, but um, it is an aside nonetheless. Now I want to talk about um, go back and. Um, Talk about um, and multiplying and, and dividing complex numbers. Sorry, guys, I was a bit distracted there. So multiplying and, and, and dividing complex numbers. Now, let me just <clears throat> go back, actually, and because uh, we haven't really done this, and I want to start doing this now. Is is getting numbers in their comp in their in their Cartesian form and their uh, polar form and switching between the two. Now, this is the meat of very, very important little idea in complex numbers. It's probably the central idea, okay? So we talked about, remember, this is way back, uh, this is maybe two or three lectures ago, we had the Cartesian form, a Car uh, Cartesian form, and we said that it, that was x plus i, y. And remember, we drew a little diagram here, this is x, and this is y, and this is theta, and this was r. And we said that we can write x as r cos theta plus i r sine theta using polar coordinates. We can do that. That's not a problem. And we bring the R outside. And I said, we could call this the polar form if you want to, but you don't. Don't do that. 
I kind of I was hesitant about it the time I did it, but and it's, it, it, people, some textbooks call this a polar form. It's not. Here's what the polar form is. Uh, we now use the Moivre's theorem. Cos theta plus i sine theta, you can write that as r exponential i theta. Okay? Very important. So this is the Cartesian form, and this is the polar form. And you can switch between one and the other, and that's what I want to, want to do now with you. And we're going to stop then after that, and we'll, 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 we'll take a break then, and then we'll come back for part two. So you can switch between the Cartesian form of a complex number and the polar form, and switching between the two is quite is, 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 is important. Going from the um, polar form to the Cartesian form is very, very, very easy. Okay, and we'll do that maybe at the end. But now what I want to do is I want to just do maybe a couple of examples of going from the Cartesian form into the polar form. And the polar form requires you, if you know what x is and you know what y is, you have to get what theta is, and you have to get what r is. r is the modulus, and theta is the argument of the complex number. Now, if you are in the first quadrant, it's relatively, it's relatively straightforward. So let, you, let me just show you. Um, so pf is the polar form. Let's, let's look at 1 plus i. Okay, so you draw your different diagram. Always draw your argon diagram. This is one, and this is one, and this is theta, and this is r. Okay, and um, r is always the square root of the real part squared, the imaginary part squared, so it's one square plus one squared, which is the square root of two. So, so you're using Pyth Pythagoras, Pythagoras' theorem. Theta in this case is very straightforward. Tan theta is one over one, is the one. So t then is tan inverse of 1, which is pi over 4. So 1 plus i, this is the Cartesian form, is equal to root 2 exponential i i over 4. And if you look at these two forms, they do not look at all equivalent. Okay? So it's just, it's just they're, they're completely different looking, but they are the same thing. Okay? Sometimes in analysis, you want the polar form. It's much more convenient to use the polar form than the Cartesian form. Sometimes you prefer the Cartesian form. And switching between the two is, is kind of important. And this idea of switching between two equivalent forms of the same thing is um, maybe 50% of engineering and mathematics. So the, the, maybe, and this is kind of an introduction to that. So that's the first thing, folks. Uh, as I say, going from the, 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 if it's in the first quadrant, it's very, very straightforward. Let's look at, the polar form for a little bit more complicated one. So the polar form for minus three plus four i. Just for a laugh, I don't care. I don't know where that is. So if you do, if it, again, if you have the Cartesian form, and I'm asking for the polar form, always draw an argon diagram at the beginning, at the start. Always. Don't do this. Don't do this in your head. Just do the draw a little diagram. So here we see it's one, two, three. This is one, two, three, four. This is the imaginary part of Z. This is the real part of Z. And so you see it's minus 3. So it's, it's 3 along the, the negative direction here. And it's plus 4. So you get up, up here. Okay. So this is R. And this angle here is theta. Let me call this angle here alpha. Okay. So R is very straightforward, folks. Always. R is... The modulus is the square root, in this case, of minus 3 squared, which is 9, plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. No problem. Always there's no problem with calculating the modulus. It's the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Now, in this case, we want to get theta. And it's, it's easier. The, the way you get theta in this case is by just, um, we know what this is a, a triangle here. Right angle triangle here. We know what the length of the sides are. The length here is three, and the length here is four. So um, in this case, we know that tan of alpha is uh, is the opposite is the opposite over the adjacent. So it's four over three. So alpha then is tan inverse of four over three. Now um, I'm going to do this in my head. <laughs> And I think it's 0.93 using the calculator. How many decimal places do you take to take two? I'm, you know, I'm going to push two or three, whatever. Um, 
So alpha is 0.93. Always, this is radians, folks. Always be in radian mode. So then theta then is pi minus 0.93. And pi is 3.14. So I think I got theta as 2.21. Yeah, something, something close to that. Okay? So be careful with this. Alpha gives you this angle here. You're not interested in that angle alpha. Explicitly, you're interested in the angle theta, but you're going to use alpha in order to find theta because you know that the complete um, the, a line makes an angle theta or makes an angle pi. So this 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 this, this angle here, this half rotation has um, pi is pi radians. So therefore, we're going to use that um, knowledge to calculate what theta is. We know what alpha is, so therefore theta then is pi minus alpha, you get 2.21. So therefore, if you come back up here, folks, the polar form for minus 3 plus 4i is 5, exponentially i, 2.21. Boom, boom. That's an important idea. And when you look at it again, when you when you start doing this in, in uh, the first time, they do, do not look equivalent at all, but they are. This is the magic of complex numbers. They com look completely different, but they are absolutely the same thing. Okay, so this is minus 3 plus 4i is 5 exponential i, 2.21. Now, you could argue maybe that the Cartesian form is a simpler form in some way, but not always. As I say, sometimes, and we're going to be doing this in the next part of the lecture, where you actually want the number to be in, in polar form. Okay? All right. So that's come from, come going from um, Cartesian form to a polar form. Let me show you going from polar form to Cartesian is really, really easy. So don't be put... Do not be put off by this, folks. If, if suppose I, I want to, so let me just take three exponential i. Um, two point one. It doesn't matter. Exponential i two point one. If I want the Cartesian form for that, I write this as three, and then I. The way you get it is very simple. It's just using the Moivre's theorem. Exponential i two point one is cos of two point one plus i sine of 2.1. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a, oh, I, I don't have a calculator with me, actually, but you just multiply that out then, so you get 3 cos 2.1. You get cos of 2.1 using a calculator, and multiply it by 3 to get the, the, the real part of the complex number, plus I 3 sine of 2.1. You you're in radian mode, you get the sine of 2.1, you multiply it by 3, that gives you the imaginary part of the complex number. So going from from polars to Cartesians is really, really easy. You just use the Moivre's theorem. Exponential i and angle is cos of the angle plus i sine of the angle, and then you multiply in by the modulus. So do not be put off by this. Okay, so this is very, very easy, very, very important as well. All right, beautiful. I'm going to stop here and try and upload this part of the lecture and then come back for part two. All right, we'll see what happens.